Hello and welcome to Maritime Medicine. This is Jonathan Busco and in this session we'll be talking about cold water immersion. By the end of this session you'll be able to define cold water immersion, define the 1101 rule as it applies to cold water immersion, and talk about how to safely remove victims of cold water immersion from the water. As part of this we'll discuss circumrescue collapse. Cold water immersion is immersion in any water below 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. So we're not talking about freezing water, sub-freezing, not even 40 degree water, although those all would represent cold water immersions. Any immersion below 70 degrees Fahrenheit is considered a cold water immersion in terms of the life threats and the pathophysiology of what happens. And we're not necessarily talking about submersion. That is, the head does not necessarily have to go underwater. It's really the effect of having the body in the water and the effect of the water temperature that's important. The colder the water, the greater the risk for bad outcome and the faster a bad outcome will occur. But again, below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you cannot maintain your body warmth in an unprotected state and so you're at risk. Now this session is going to focus mostly on survival and care of victims and not really on the pathophysiology. There are plenty of good references including textbooks on what happens during a cold water immersion event and I would recommend that if you want more information you look into those but this is really important to you as an individual not just your patients because this could be a matter of your survival if you're immersed in cold water you immediately start to breathe erratically and if you breathe erratically you are no longer able to perform physical activity in a coordinated manner and so assuming you're wearing a life jacket because if you're not wearing a life jacket all bets are off you're more or less going to die pretty quickly. So assuming you're wearing a life jacket, if you're immersed in cold water, you have one minute to get your breathing under control. So you get that initial cold water shock and your breathing becomes erratic and you don't get that under control, you're going to die. So you need to spend that first minute getting your breathing under control you then have about 10 minutes of useful activity before you become incapacitated. So this is where you need to do the things that are going to promote your chance of survival. This means getting into a life raft or at least getting up as much as you can out of the water. This means signaling for help. This means contemplating whether you swim or stay and that's covered elsewhere. But this is where you can do things to increase your chance of survival and that's what you should be doing. You're really not going to start getting hypothermic for about half an hour. Your body uses a variety of techniques to keep your core temperature warm and in fact it will start to go up briefly in the initial period and then in about 30 minutes you start to lose your ability to maintain a normal body temperature and you become hypothermic and in about an hour you'll become unresponsive from hypothermia so you don't get hypothermia in the first minute or first five minutes or first ten minutes or even the first twenty minutes you're in cold water you get hypothermia after about half an hour so you need to remember that and make sure you take greatest advantage of that first ten minutes of useful activity and again this all assumes you're wearing a life jacket if you're not chances are you'll never be able to get your breathing under control and you will drown and die very early on in your immersion. So let's assume this isn't you. Let's assume you are now the rescuer and you are attempting to retrieve a victim of cold water immersion from the water. Historically people have been lifted vertically and what happens, what we've noticed as a an event is that they become unresponsive and possibly die. Sometimes they'll even fall from height if they're being lifted by a strop just under their arms. And this is caused by a number of things. Shift in body fluid, change in hydrostatic pressure, uh, 
likely changes in the amount of adrenaline people are releasing when they get to the point where they're being rescued. So it's a multifactorial event. But the bottom line is that a vertical lift has a much greater risk of this loss of consciousness and sudden death. And so you need to try to either do a two-strop lift where both under the arms and under the knees are supported to keep the patient in a semi-horizontal position or use a parbuckling technique to keep them in a horizontal position to roll them out of the water. Patients can also suffer from circumrescue collapse, which is sudden death before or hours after a rescue, uh, sometimes up to a day after a rescue, people will suddenly go into cardiac arrest. This, again, is multifactorial, and it's, it's the type of event that occurs during the actual extraction, the retrieval of the victim, but then this risk persists for a day. And so it's best to keep the patient in a horizontal position, again, related to the fluid shifts and uh, maldistribution or inappropriate or incorrect distribution of body fluids in the body that happen after the cold water immersion. You want to warm the patient, but don't get them really hot. Um, this, this can cause quite a bit of shift of body fluids peripherally if you heat them up. And in fact, immersing them in a hot tub or hot water is one of the worst things you can do. They, they get after drop, the cold water rushes into their core, they're at a much increased risk of cardiac arrest. So you want to you want to warm them up using core warming techniques and try not to overheat them. Rehydrate them, either oral fluids or if need be through an IV to help again with the fluid distribution and monitor them for that at-risk period. Again, this is by no means a comprehensive exploration of cold water immersion. It's a fascinating topic. There's lots of great reading out there on it and I would recommend that you read more about it. It is very relevant to the maritime industry, but the real keys are if you're going in the water, one minute to get your breathing under control, 10 minutes of useful activity, one hour till you become unresponsive from hypothermia, make sure you're wearing a life vest. When you take a patient out of the water, don't lift them vertically, lift them in a horizontal position and monitor them as they're at risk for sudden death up to 24 hours after the event. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact your instructor or professor. Thank you very much.